All right. To finish up this beginner's guide, the last thing that I want to cover is exporting your textures for use in another program, whether it be a game or Marmoset or uh, a movie render like RenderMan, Arnold, V-Ray. There's a couple things that I like to do to ensure that I'm visualizing everything in Substance Painter the correct way. So the first thing I want to do is go over to your texture set settings. And you can see all of these maps that we all loaded in here. And then right here we have size. I, uh, it's important to be looking at your object at the right map size for the like UV map. You don't want to export a 1024 map, but be looking at a 4096 map because then the textures aren't gonna look like they're supposed to. So if I have this 4096 map, all of these details are really, really good. And I could be working in 4096, and then when I go to export, I could export it at 1024. So it's going to export textures that look like this. And you see all the scratch detail is gone because the pixels are larger. So you always work, at least right before you export, work in or view the correct map size just so you know what you're getting. You can work in 4096 just to get an idea and then drop it down before export. But it's always a good idea to see. The next thing I want to do is the the map that I'm using to view, I want to make sure that it's the correct map. So right now it's panorama. When I first started, I, I suggested us to use one of these black and white maps, a studio map, because it doesn't have any color data. And we can see the difference. If I were to click this, we can see this grenade looks completely different. And it's unlikely that we're going to use these environment maps in the next renderer. They'll probably have their own environment maps. But just to get a base understanding of what we're looking like, I always like to shift to a black and white map so I can see what this will look like with no color additives. So here I can see that this metal color is actually coming across a little purple. And I'm not a super big fan of that. So that allows me to go back into my layers click here I can go into the steel roughness which is the base color for that and I can look at the color and you can actually see we are a little blue so I can drag it in and I can drag it up or I can drag it down and then that'll allow me to get rid of that purple tint that was there just because of the color was slightly purple of that material so now I'm able to edit everything just a little bit better okay fantastic so now that I'm here and close this out go here I have made sure that I'm at the correct ex viewing size that I'm gonna export at and I have checked to make sure that I am on a environment map that has no color you can also put your shadows on real quick just to see like we talked about in the first video drop it down to 50 to 70 and you can get you can get a little bit of understanding of how this thing will actually look and behave there we go okay so i'm gonna turn that off close this out now to actually export this you're gonna go up to file you're gonna go down to export textures and this will come up you're gonna click on that front part right here where it says output directory and that's where you're gonna choose where you're uh, maps are going to be saved. So I'm going to go into substance demo. I'm going to create a textures tab. And then we get textures. Okay, select folder. Good. And you'll see it changed. What we have here now is the output template and you can see what these templates include. So you can choose PBR metal roughness and you'll see it has a base color, a roughness, a metallic, a normal, a height, and emissive. If I were to choose something for let's say Unreal Engine, now we have base color, it's occlusion, roughness, metallic, it's all combined into one map because that's how Unreal reads, a normal and an emissive. Unity would be different. Uh, same thing with PBR metal roughness and that's what we used was PBR metal roughness. So if you look in here, it's going to give us a base material, which is an RBG channel. It's also going to give us an alpha channel that's baked in. So if I had opacity in there, it would be baked into that channel. If you wanted to add something, you could also add 
a gray, an RGB, any one of these, RGB plus alpha, which is this, you can add a map to this and save it as its own, as its own preset. So I'm okay with this. So now I'm happy. So this will show what we're going and, and how it's going to be named. And this is going to be the list of exports. So back into the standard settings. I want PBR, PBR metallic roughness. I get to choose my file type. In this case, I'm going to go with PNG. You can choose your bit. 18, 8 bit plus dithering 16. Just know what you're exporting to. If you're exporting to Unreal, you definitely want to use 8 bit instead of 16 bit. Um, you can use 16 bit, but requires some other editing to go in, so it's not a linear. So, 8 bit size is based on the texture set size. So, this is based on what we chose here, which was 2048. So, this is where you can choose I want it to be a 2048 or 8K or 2K, so on and so forth. Padding. Uh, Dilation infinite basically just means if the edge of the grenade is green and there's no other UVs connecting to it, that green will continue on until it hits the border of the next UV. Okay, so now we're here and we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this. It'll bring us to our list of exports and it'll show you the list of what is being exported and then in the console it'll actually come here and tell you if there's a fail or a um, a successful exported file so it successfully exported these really terribly named objects which is right here okay and then I can just go ahead and close this down and I'm going to go ahead and open my folder and see where it went. So if I bring this over and go to textures, we can see that all of my maps, according to my UV, have been created and they have been exported, which is great. Okay, let me close this down. Okay, the next thing that you would have to do is if you use auto UV, not if you UV'd like I did on this one and created the UVs, you're done. But if you auto UV'd and had Substance Painter deal with the UVs, you need to file and then export mesh. Um, and then you can triangulate or not triangulate if it's going into a game engine. Um, and then basically you would export. And then that would be the model that you uh, use because it will have the UV data saved from Substance Painter. Another option that we have um, that is useful if you're going to be doing map editing it, uh, outside of Substance Painter. You can actually go File, Export Textures, and in here, you can actually find your mesh maps. And the mesh maps are these maps right here. The base normal, the world space normal, the curvature, the position, and the thickness. So if you're doing editing to make a cavity map or any other kind of maps that are needed, you can actually export these maps without all the the added additive stuff with our from the layers and you can export those to edit so that covers exporting and you should be go good to bring this into whatever software you want and connect accordingly